Hey, thanks so much for joining us for another episode of the Tree of Life Church podcast. It's our prayer that these messages help connect you to the life, love, and power of Jesus. This morning, I want to get into the, the peace, the peace of God. And so I know Pastor Cody taught on this a few weeks back, and he did a phenomenal job. I, I always listen to the guys when they preach when, I, when I'm gone, and I feed on that. It blesses me, and it helps grow me. Uh, but I just felt something stirring in my heart a little bit more uh, from another perspective. And so let me read Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 for us. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes because he's scheming, he's planning, he's coming. For our struggle's not against flesh and blood. It's not against people. It's not against natural things. It has a root in the spiritual world, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, not the days of evil maybe we're living in, but when evil lands on your front door and is all up in your face, you may be able to stand your ground in that moment, and af after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Now, those first three things we're gonna talk about a little bit today, those are things you are always to be wearing. Always have them on. Now it talks about three more, and it goes on to say, in addition to this, take up, which means pick up, the translation, pick up as needed, the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation as needed, and put on the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, as you need to. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests, and this we will address next week. So I wanna go back and talk a little bit about the first three, but I really wanna land on the gospel of peace, having your feet shod or fitted with the gospel of peace. Understand, as a reminder, in this whole series, we are in a war, a spiritual war. And we're not trying to stand our ground, in a sense. We're trying to stand the ground Jesus gave us. It is ours, but Jesus gave it to us. He won the victory on the cross and the resurrection. He spiritually gave us ground that we are to stand. And because he's so good and amazing, he didn't just say, stand there. I want you to hold this ground. He gave us what we needed to hold the ground. Come on, right? He gave us spiritual ground, and then he gave us what we need to stand it, and then he says, stand. And so he gave us everything we need. We just need to understand that. And we want you to know, Paul wants you to know, that you're in a battle, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, nothing to be fearful of, but know that we're in a battle, a real battle, and we can stand the ground when we operate in the things God given us to operate in. Because our real battle is, again, it's not against flesh and blood, it's against spiritual things. So our battle is in the spirit, not in the natural. Every root, uh, every, every battle we face has a root in the spirit. So we need to address the root. Everything else, we're just managing things. If we're just trying to work it out in the natural, we're just managing things. But if you want to take care of it, you got to get it at the root. Amen. You got to go to the root. Okay. So I don't want to review a lot because it's for time's sake, but Paul is saying here is he wants us to understand that we are to stand firm or have a sure footing and what Jesus achieved for us, stand your spiritual ground. And so uh, when we get to this point of talking about these three pieces of armor, the, the belt of truth and uh, the breastplate of righteousness and now the shoes, the gospel of peace, understand that he says, you're not, t when it comes to truth, we know the scripture says, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. But what that means is the truth you know will set you free. Come on, right? And we talked we talk last week. How many got your graffe with you today, right? You got your graffe with you? Okay, if you, not, oh, not very many. Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not on my app, right, on my phone. Uh, if you don't have a Bible, then uh, go to the Welcome Center and we'll give you one. If we run out, we'll get your name and we'll get one to you and come on the next visit. But uh, we need to know the truth because it's a truth we know that sets us free. Now, the truth is God-based knowledge, the truth of God's word, it's God-based knowledge. So he says, put on the belt of truth. It is central to everything. It begins there. It's central. God-based knowledge is central to everything you face and everything you walk in. And then he says, and then put on the breastplate of righteousness. Or once you have the truth from God-based knowledge, then you will know which way to go. You'll make the right decisions. You'll make the God decisions. You need God-based truth to make God-based decisions, you'll go the right way or in the right standing with God, which is literally what righteousness means, right standing in God. So you know the truth, God-based knowledge, you make decisions based on that, and then he goes on to say, and then you need to 
put on your feet to stand your ground the gospel of peace. So you have God-based knowledge, which is the truth. Then you'll know the direction you're to go in. And then you'll know that you'll have peace in that time that will come from it. So I want to talk about that for a minute. So Paul says in verse 15, he, he wants to talk about your shoes. He, he wants to talk about what's on your feet so you can stand your ground. And I just want to say this. If you were here last, uh, well, when Pastor Cody taught on it, it's just kind of funny. I was watching it, and I saw he put slides up to show you all the shoes. And I thought, what an overachiever. Give me a break, right? <laughs> I don't have any slides. I don't have any slides today, right? <laughs> up there for you. No, I just appreciate both he and Pastor Dave. They do such a good job. But he put those up. If you're here, maybe you'll remember that. But the shoes a Roman soldier would wear would have spikes on the bottom because it would help him stand firm, stand his ground in the middle of a battle. Because we know what it's like not to stand your ground. We know what it's like, right, to give ground. We know what it's like to stumble. We know what it's like to slip. We know what it's like to, to fall. And we need to be able to stand our ground in the battle. And so Paul's talking about this, standing your ground in the evil day. You need sure footing because we all know what it means to be removed from our place of stability. We know what that looks like in our marriage. We know what it looks like in our body, in our family, in our finances. We know what it looks like in our, in our mind, in our relationships. We've all been there. And Paul says, stand firm, stand firm. But you can't do it without the proper footing or footwear. And so stability we need, sure footing we need. And understand that the enemy, if he cannot keep you from coming to Jesus as Savior and Lord, he wants to keep you from standing your ground. If he can't keep you out of heaven through salvation, he wants to keep you from standing your ground and not fulfilling or experiencing all that God has for you. So Paul says, start with truth or God-based knowledge to go the right direction in light of the truth that you've learned. And now he says, you need some shoes, the gospel of peace for sure footing. Let me give you the biblical definition of peace. And here it is, biblical definition of peace. It is Peace, biblical definition of peace is calm and tranquility of the soul. Calm and tranquility of the soul. And if you wonder kind of what that is, it's the opposite of anxiety, worry, and fear. Sometimes you got to look to the opposite to really know, right, what the definition is. Calm and tranquility of the soul. Peace is calm and tranquility of the soul in the midst of difficult circumstances. It's calm and tranquility of the soul despite external circumstances. Calm and tranquility of the soul on the inside despite the chaos on the outside. And the Bible calls that peace, the peace that passes all understanding in Philippians 4. So it really makes no sense. It talks about a peace that doesn't make sense to you from the inside out. It's not biblical peace when everything on the outside is calm. You don't need biblical peace when everything on the outside is calm. And let me say this, if you are not at peace when everything on the outside of peace, around you is calm, at peace, then there's other issues that you need to deal with. We didn't talk about there, right? But in the midst of chaos, in the midst of the storm, it's a peace that makes no sense that you even have it because of what's going on in your life. It's a biblical peace. It says the peace of God, you don't understand. The the reason you don't understand it is because you shouldn't be peaceful in that moment. Not based on everything you're facing, but you are. It's why I'm calm when everything around me is chaos. It's why I'm stable when everything around me is unstable. It's it's God's given me a peace that passes understanding. I don't even understand why at that moment in time. Nobody understands why I'm calm in that moment. Nobody else understands why I lost my job and I didn't lose my mind. Nobody understands why I have no money in the bank, but yet I still praise God for his provision. He is still Jehovah Jireh. No one else understands when the doctor gave me a bad report, I can still bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Nobody else understands why when my world is falling apart, I'm not falling apart with it. It's because I got a peace that passes understanding, that's peace in the Bible, and it's so important, this peace, this calm. Here's what it says in Colossians 3.15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since, you are, since as members of one body, we are called to peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. That word rule is a word that would be similar to an umpire. Let the peace in your heart make the call. Let the peace in your heart call the ball and strike. Let the peace in your heart call the good and the bad, the choice. Let the peace in your heart rule. Be led by that peace. It is so important to let the peace of God rule in your heart. So we take the truth or God's knowledge God's base knowledge, make righteous decisions, good God choices, and we let the peace rule. John 14, 27 says this, peace I leave with you, Jesus says, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. 
meaning, implying that the world has a peace, but he's not talking about the world's peace. The world's peace is managing something for a time. The world's peace is temporary. The world's peace is outward, external. His peace is based on him and not circumstances. His peace is not moved by the circumstances around you. It's internal, not external. He says, I'm giving you a peace different than the world. We need to know that because we find peace in different things in the world. We can find peace on medication. We can find peace in hobbies and activities. We can find peace in relationships. We can find peace in circumstances, but it's all temporary. But God's talking about a different peace he has. He has a different peace that's not based on any of those things. It's based on who he is, and we'll get to that in just a moment. So John 14 says, the world can give you a temporary peace, but Jesus gives us peace not from the outside in, but the inside out. He he says, I leave you my peace. It's his peace. His peace is not determined upon circumstances. It's determined by who he is and who he is in you. Uh, uh, So let me say, it's his peace. What kind of peace is that? What kind of peace is Jesus' peace? Well, when he's writing this, he's getting ready to go to the cross. So his peace is crucifixion peace, going to the cross peace. Can I say it that way? His peace is knowing that he's going to die and still being at peace. His peace is knowing that he's going to be beaten and 39 stripes are going to be placed upon his back and he's still at peace. Come on, somebody. I don't know that there's a greater peace than someone having peace going on, the, on their way to the crucifixion. That's the peace. Jesus' peace, again, is not based on eternal, uh, external rather circumstances. John 16, says this, I have told you these things so that in me, in me, you may have peace. You have peace in him. In this world, you'll have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. He says, the peace that I want you to have, that, that's the peace that should be normal for you, comes from him. Put on the gospel of peace. Verse 15, again, says, have your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Peace that Jesus gives, peace says, is in the gospel. The peace that Jesus gives, Paul says, is in the gospel. Peace that Jesus is giving away is in the gospel. It's not in the world. It's it's more than money. It's more than a better job. It's not in the world or the world's peace. Jesus says, I'm talking about peace that's in the gospel. Paul calls it the gospel of peace. So let's go to the gospel. The Greek word for the gospel is translated good news. Now, I wanna, I wanna mess with you a little bit right here. This Bible, this graphe, is not what he's referring to. This is not the good news. I mean, because I was looking at a passage of scripture the other day, just reading, and I came across a passage of scripture where Elisha was going up. He says, I'm gonna go up. And then all these 42 kids came, 42 boys, I think, came and made fun of him. Go on up there, Baldy. They're kind of bald. Go on up there, bald man. Go on up there, Baldy. And all of a sudden, these bears came out of the woods and took care of those little boys. That's not the good news. <laughs> if you're bald, maybe. I don't know. I'm not. We'll have to ask somebody. I don't know, but That's not the good. What is he talking about? He's talking about the gospel of peace. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospels. What are the gospels? What is the good news? It's the life of Jesus. Jesus came to the earth to be the perfect sacrifice. He died on a cross and paid for your sin, and he rose up in resurrection power. He says the gospel of peace, the life of Jesus is where we find our peace. We got to get in the gospel, people, because it's the peace for our life in the midst of the storms we're facing. I just don't know if I can read the whole Bible. I get you, but read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read about the life of Jesus because everything he did is for you. Everything in there, his death and his resurrection. And and I think that's important because we need to understand that the gospel, the good news is, is not about just the death of Jesus and through his sacrifice, we can have a relationship with him and therefore have heaven one day. That's typically where Christians place emphasis in the gospel. But it's also about his resurrection. It's also about the power to live. The power, resurrection power. You know, that's the gospel as much as his death giving us access to heaven. And so that's great. I'm going to heaven one day. Praise the Lord, that's good news. But what about the time I still have left on the planet? And he says, oh, I got peace for that too because it's all the gospel. It's the resurrection power of Jesus. It's that same power that raised Jesus from the dead that dwells in you, that enables you to walk in peace because it's all the gospel of peace. We find our peace that passes understanding in the life of Jesus and what he did for you and I on the cross and the resurrection. But you gotta know it because the truth you know that sets you free. The good news, the gospel, and again, most Christians apply the gospel only to what it takes to get to heaven. 
But the other half of that is, what does it take to live on the earth still? The resurrection power of Jesus. And in fact, Romans 5, 9 through 10 says this, since we have now been justified, since you and I have been justified, we've been made righteous because of Jesus and his work. We've been saved, we've been cleansed by his blood. How much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? How much more through his death, but how much more through his life? Come on, somebody. His death justified us, giving us access to heaven and to the Father. His life gives us power to live on the earth. So we may not be in heaven yet, but the gospel says that we can bring some heaven to this earth. We can find peace, but it's in the gospel, right? It's the gospel of peace that you're putting on. How much more shall we be saved through his life? And we know the gospel because of that, but how much more, or death, but how much more should we be saved through his life? Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 through 24 says this, may God himself, God all by himself, God who doesn't need anybody else, God who certainly doesn't need this world, God all by himself, and in case you don't know who he is, he is the God of peace, may he sanctify you through and through, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's hold on for a second. Can we go back one slide? Go back. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you. So we know that the death and the blood of Jesus justified us, but the resurrection power sanctifies us. And it sanctifies the spirit, soul, and body. What that means is we are, while we were still on the planet, we, were, we are in a process of transformation. We are being changed every day. By the resurrection power of Jesus. We're justified through his death. We're sanctified through his life. And we are being changed and transformed every day. And how are we doing that? Spirit, soul, and body. And listen, the order is extremely important. Spirit, soul, and body. We're being transformed every day. Spirit, soul, and body. We have to understand the, the, the order is important. The rest of the time on the earth is being sanctified or being transformed, a sanctification process, spirit, soul, and body, and the order is everything. Notice he does not say body, soul, and spirit, but that's how we typically operate, right? Because of our senses, right? So all of a sudden our body responds because that's like the immediate thing that seems like it hits us, and instead of addressing it spiritually because it's a spiritual attack, we address it naturally. We're not looking in the right direction. We're trying to make these natural changes, which at best helps us manage a moment, but does not fix anything. Because you can't fix the outside, can't fix the inside. But the inside can fix the outside. So God put it in an order, spirit, because everything has a beginning in the spirit realm, and you are seated in heavenly places. Your blessings come from heavenly places, and the battle's in heavenly places. So God starts by his spirit because he's a spirit, and when you become born again, he recreates his spirit in you. And so everything flows from your spirit to your soul to your body. But we tend to deal with everything, body, soul, and spirit. And it doesn't work that way. The body and soul cannot address the spirit man. So the order is important. He says the God of peace starts at the spirit, and then he moves to the soul, and then he moves to the body. And the reason we can't find peace, again, is because we either got it backwards or out of order. Your spirit, understand, your spirit is the God part of you. When you receive Jesus, the Bible says you were created in his image, in your spirit, man. You're a new creature in Christ. The spirit part of you is the God part of you. That's how God can download who he is in you. That spirit part of you is how you can walk in victory through the spirit. You can have joy through the spirit. You can have peace through the spirit. You can have power through the spirit, through the spirit of God. It comes through God's spirit. God gets it to your spirit, man. That's how God operates. Everything of God operates in your spirit. Everything of God is in your spirit. It's the, it's the one part of you the enemy does not have access to. The enemy can be all over your body, all over your uh, soul, and he is. But he can't touch your spirit because it's of God. And God is greater than. And so that's why you got to begin with your spirit, man. Everything begins with your spirit, man. Everything begins with your spirit, man. And understand this, that your body just follows your soul. Because you know how I know that? Because if you can't sleep at night, if your body can't sleep at night, it's because something's going on in your soul. 
You know, I know that because if you're angry with someone and you lash out, your body lashes out at them, it's because something's going on in your soul. See, you can't see what's going on in your soul until it manifests in your body and what's going on around about you. Your body will just follow the soul. And so we have to address the spirit, man, which will address the soul, which the body will just follow. Spirit to soul to body. My soul is all over the place sometimes, right? Happy, sad, mad, angry, all kinds of things. And when we lose our peace, it's not lost in the body, it's lost in the soul. Peace is lost in the soul. And that's why we have some of the struggles we have. It's, I wrote this down. It's the miserable soul that tells the body to let everyone else know how miserable I am. <laughs> that's truth. My, my truth. Okay, so most people start with trying to address the body and hopes that they can address the soul. May the God of peace sanctify you, transform you, spirit, soul, and body. Listen, the goal of the spirit is to release the things of God into your soul. And then your body follows along. That's why the soul has to get an alignment or agreement with your spirit man. Your spirit man is never gonna get in alignment with your soul. God doesn't do that. He doesn't operate that way. So your, your soul needs to get in alignment and agreement with your spirit man. And the reason why we don't have peace is because the soul has not been changed or submitted or in alignment or agreement with the spirit. And our spirit is not pouring the things of God into the soul if the soul won't get in alignment. But we focus on the soul and the body a lot of time. And now we wonder why we don't have peace. Well, it's because we probably don't know how this operates, but the gospel of peace is what Paul says put on. And so we get what we need. I'll get there more in a minute just based on what Jesus did. So the question, how do I get my soul to come in alignment with the spirit? Because I need to sleep. Am I the only one? I need some rest. I need to stop worrying. I need to stop having anxiety. I need to stop all that. But you have to start with truth, God-based truth, despite how you feel, despite what people are telling you. And then you have to make choices based on the truth and let the peace of God then rule and reign. If your, if your soul doesn't come in line with your spirit, the body won't either. But once the soul accepts, once the soul accepts outside circumstances, it won't line up with the inside. If you've given over to your soulish emotions and feelings, and we all have, we're not gonna get our spirit man on board. Now, the gospel only relates to what Jesus accomplished in his death and resurrection. So for you and I, in those moments, we got to run to the gospel. We got to run and remind ourselves what Jesus did, what he paid for, what he gave his life for. We got to remind ourselves what happened when he came out in resurrection power, the greatest power ever known, the same great, incomparably great, mighty power, it says in Ephesians, that's for every believer. That's the gospel. So we got to get in the gospel to feed our spirit man so our spirit man then can pour into or our soul can come in submission to our spirit man. Uh, my, my, my soul says, I lost my job and I have no money in the bank. How am I going to feed my family? How do I keep the lights on? My spirit says, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. That's God's base truth. Now, I know your soul's stating facts. Well, it's true. I don't have any money in the bank. That's why you got to go back to the gospel, the work that Jesus did in resurrection power. My soul says, you're broke. That's a fact. My soul has a fact, but that's not God-based truth. The once my soul goes to the spirit, my spirit says the truth of God's word. It reminds me the truth of God's word. And once my soul comes in alignment with my spirit, a release valve opens up, and what begins to flow into my soul is now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Now my body can sleep at night. See, when something happens, you have to run to the spirit and find out God's based truth on that subject. You have to run and find God based truth. And when you get a bad report from the doctor and your soul is all over the place, you need to run to the gospel, the good news, and find the truth that Jesus took 39 stripes on his back and by his stripes you have been healed. That truth of the gospel is his body was bruised and broken so you could be whole and healed. You have to go to the gospel to get your truth. And you meditate on that, and you meditate on that, and you speak that out, and you speak that out, and you, 
it gets down into your soul. The more you meditate on the gospel truth and the more you speak out the gospel truth, the more it gets down into your soul. The, the more your soul hears it coming out of your mouth, the more that you put it in there, it gets down into your soul. And your soul begins to come in agreement and speaks to your body. Uh, Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says this, do not be anxious about anything. Well, isn't that what we live in an anxious world, right? But in every situation, every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Now let's hold on there for a second, guys. Now, with thanksgiving, how does that throw in the middle of that scripture right there? You just talked about I'm being anxious and now I gotta pray and I gotta do all this, but with thanksgiving. You know where thanksgiving, what, where thanksgiving comes out of? The gospel. So no matter what I'm facing, the gospel says I can rejoice because he died on the cross for my sin and I'm going to heaven one day and I'm free. I can give thanksgiving because he came out of the grave in resurrection power and that same power dwells in me. I can give thanksgiving. I can give thanksgiving to God in any situation because it's the gospel. It's the gospel. It's the gospel which brings peace to my spirit, man, which feeds my soul and gets my soul in alignment. The gospel, meditating, speaking on, knowing the gospel will infuse your spirit, man, and it will get your soul to get in alignment. And then your body follows. It just follows. I go to God in prayer and petition with thanksgiving now because I can because of the gospel. It goes on, oh, verse seven, okay. And the peace of God, which is different than the world, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ. Listen, and the peace of God, which transcends all your understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ. What is your heart and your mind? It's your soul. So now, all of a sudden, I go with thanksgiving because of the gospel, and I really give thanksgiving, and I get into thanksgiving because of what he's done in his resurrection power, and now what that does, that puts a guard around my soul. The gospel, I can say it this way, the gospel, when you're in the gospel, it'll put a guard around your soul so your soul can get in alignment with your spirit, man, and then your body can follow because now your mind is in Christ Jesus and not in the things of this world because I've been in the gospel and because of what the gospel says about my life because of what Jesus did on the cross and resurrection. That's where my peace comes from. That gets into my spirit. And I keep meditating on that, I keep giving thanksgiving, I keep praying on that, and all of a sudden, my soul will get in alignment. The gospel. Last scripture, Isaiah 26, three through four. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the gospel. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself, he is the rock eternal. He will never change. You can always trust in the work of the gospel. You can always trust in the good news of what Jesus did on the cross for you and what he did in his resurrection. And every time the enemy comes at you, look down at your feet and hold your ground. Get in the gospel. Get in the good news. And you need to connect with your spirit man through prayer and meditation and thanksgiving. Get in God's truth, God-based truth. Get the graphe, get a logos, and rhema the enemy in that. You make decisions on God-based truth the breastplate of righteousness, and then let the peace of God rule and reign in your life. And let the gospel put a guard around your soul so it stays in alignment with your spirit, man. Put on the shoes of peace, the gospel of peace, so you can stand your ground in evil days. Amen. We got to get in the gospel. We got to remind ourselves, maybe every day we should remind ourselves what Jesus did. It's true. It's alive. It's working in your life. And it's greater than anything that you can experience. But you gotta know it. You only walk in freedom and the truth that you know. And then none of that's about the truth about you going to heaven one day, but you got truth to walk in, resurrection power to bring heaven to earth in your life. But you gotta know the gospel because it's the basis of your peace. Thanks again for joining us this week. We pray that this message encouraged and inspired you. If you want to find out how you can be a part of Tree of Life, just go to our website, treeoflifechurch.org. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and share it with a friend. 